Hi everyone, my name is Carol Nyazika. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. So in this video, I wanted to go through what you should expect after you have a C-section. In the first video, I had um, described what my journey was when I gave birth to Jana. Um, that was an emergency C-section. So I pretty much didn't know what I was going to experience after. So I hope this video is going to help you because I wish I had um, known a bit more um, before having um, my baby because I was hoping for a vaginal birth but I didn't get one I got a c-section instead so I hope this is informative um, if you have any more questions please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to answer those for you so the first thing I'm going to talk about is what happens after you are given your baby in from the theater um, pretty much you are taken to the recovery ward where all the other mothers are um, our ward had about four people um, and you're only allowed to have one person in there with you um, which is probably your birthing partner so you're only allowed to have one person to stay with you my husband was there with me um, through the night because I delivered at 11 36 p.m. and then um, we were in the ward I think around 12 30 or 1 o'clock I can't remember but um, around that time so our hospital um, says that you are required to stay in the hospital for 24 hours and within that 24 hours they'll be checking to see if everything is okay um, and pretty much just monitoring you that's so that's what they'll be doing the first thing they told me um, was that when the drugs start wearing off I'll probably start itching because that was one of the side effects of um, one of the drugs that they had given me so you then get something else to counteract that itchiness but you just have to ask the nurse so they don't give it to you straight away um, the next thing is that they I think the day after they remove the catheter because you have a catheter put placed in when you get your epidural right before the c-section so they remove the catheter and then within the first 12 hours I believe um, they want you to go to the toilet so that they know if everything is still functioning after they remove the catheter because if you can't pee um, because you still have the effects from the epidural um, then that means they have to place the catheter back in so they ask you to pee in this bowl and then they want to see how much urine you pass um, so that's the first thing that they check um, they also ask you to walk around to see if you're able to walk because your legs will feel jelly like um, after the epidural because obviously you're numb from the from under your boobs it gets all the way down so they want to make sure that you can actually move around they, so the doctor comes the doctor checks the baby the hearing and all sorts and then um, they weigh you to see what type of medication you are required to have so I needed to have um, this injection to make sure that I didn't have any blood clots so that's a requirement that I didn't know because I don't like injections I don't like meds I don't like any of that stuff but I had to inject myself every single day for six weeks so I had to inject on my right side one day and then the next day inject on my left side and then alternate so that is something that I actually didn't know happened and then I also had to keep the compression socks on for the full six weeks duration as well um, and from what they say it was to prevent any blood clot during my hospital stay my husband is the one that looked after the baby because I was still healing from the um, surgery because through so much trauma when you have a c-section that he's also still trying to figure out what's working what's not working why is this numb um, and you know can I walk can I can I bend can I carry anything so you're going through all of that so you really do need someone to help you right after you have a c-section because you will have a very difficult time so I had my husband there so he was the one who was literally looking after the baby the whole time all I did was just feed her and that's it I didn't carry her I didn't do anything he's the one who looked after the baby so that was the same thing as when I came home I only fed the baby so the next to me where the baby was sleeping was on his side of the bed so he would pass the baby to me if she needed to feed um, and then lock her to sleep after that so um, my support system was very strong because my mom was also around and she really helped tremendously with that so um, that was a blessing to have both of them there 
so once you're home I would suggest that you get a um, waistband of some sort whether it's a waist trainer a banded whatever you want to call it to help you because when you have the c-section you feel like your stomach is dropping it feels like it is dragging on the floor because it's so hollow because you can imagine that it was filled up with the baby all this time and then it's just not in you anymore it's just there's just nothing there so it's a hollow um, stomach and it just feels like because of gravity it's literally just dropped you know so i would suggest that you get something my sister-in-law is the one who actually told me and advised me to use a pillow whenever i stood up um or walked or anything so that really helped and then i realized that i needed something to compress my stomach so that i just feel um support in some in some way um so i ended up ordering a waist belt tummy belt postpartum bout whatever you want to call it to help um, with just feeling secure so that's what I ended up doing and I suggest that if you have um, a c-section lined up that you definitely get one of those um, because they really really do help um, another thing is that you're also given medication so I was given ibuprofen and paracetamol so I think I spaced it out to be four hours after each so eight o'clock I'd have an ibuprofen 12 o'clock I would have a paracetamol, 4 o'clock I would have a ibuprofen, so that's how I split them because you will be in pain. So you really need to do take them. I don't like medication but I really needed them because the pain is not pleasant. Okay, so another thing that you will experience which I didn't know is that when you're taking a number two, you're going to have hemorrhoids. That is the most painful thing ever because it just feels like, okay, I didn't have a vaginal birth, but it felt like that's how it would have felt like. <laughs> it is very excruciating um, to the point where I actually didn't want to go to the toilet um, because of the pain. So yeah, that's why you need to take your medication as well to help with that. Um, make sure you're having a lot of fiber in your diet, so a lot of vegetables and all of that. You could also take a um, stool softener to help with that because you need all the help that you can get. <laughs> I believe a lot of people experience it but not a lot of people talk about it because it's something that's a bit embarrassing because you're kind of like, whew, okay. But it'll wear off. So as your body starts um, healing, it'll wear off. So, so another thing that I experienced was that when I was breastfeeding, um, Gia would kick my stomach, right? So you're trying to heal from the stitches and the scar and everything because you actually cut twice. You cut on the epidermis layer and then you cut, uh, meaning they cut your uterus open. So you have two parts of your body that is trying to heal. So you can imagine that you may think that because the scar on the outside is healed, um, that everything is fine, but it's actually not because your inside is still healing. Um, so when I was breastfeeding, um, Gia would kick um, and she would try and stand. I don't know what she was doing, but, you know, she would use her legs against my stomach. So I used a nursing pillow, which really, really helped um, in that aspect because um, I'll just lie her on it and then feed her. Or you can just use a normal pillow. It's still the same thing. Um, it just helps. Um, yeah. And then another thing is that people assume that because you have a C-section, you're not going to bleed you will bleed make sure you still have your maternity pads because you will bleed a lot in your first week and then it will subside um over the coming weeks but yeah so it's something that you should bear in mind that you will still bleed unfortunately so the next thing is that uh, make sure that you don't do any strenuous exercises even after your six week checkup um don't lift anything heavy even a car seat um, because you will still do some damage and you might not feel it you might feel like you know I'm okay I can run up the stairs I can carry the baby I can do all of these things so surely I can do all of those other things as well but your body is still healing and you just have to be very conscious about that and patient as well because what happened to me is that I went to the gym I think around eight weeks 
I started going back to the gym um, and then I was doing weight training and I thought I wasn't putting a lot of weight um, on you know on the weight bars and so forth but it turns out that I was because I started bleeding again so that could be another sign that you're not fully healed inside because I started um, bleeding again and the doctor said it's because I am stressing my body too much and my body was not happy with me so it was telling me to stop another thing that you should um, bear in mind and you should tell your support system is that they should not be expecting you to do things that you normally did um, and this was something that I actually had to have a discussion with my mom and with my husband that you know don't give me pressure to do things or just say oh just pick that up or just put the baby down or whatever because it is not easy and they don't know what you're going through my mom didn't have a c-section so they don't know what you're going through or um, the pain that you're in so I think it's wise to just have a discussion and tell them that I can't put the baby down please may you take the baby and put the baby down for me um, I can't do XYZ because I can't lean over I can't bend um, and I can't lift that um, I'm still in pain and so forth once you have that conversation um, and you communicate clearly what your needs are it makes it so much easier because people know what your limits are and they won't expect too much from you because they'll just be like oh that's a limit let me just help or they'll just tell you, you know what just sit down don't push yourself I'll do that for you and so forth make sure you get as much rest as you can and also accept all the help that you can get I know at baby showers they tell you this um, but you don't realize it until the baby comes so just make sure that you have all the help that you can get if you can get any um, and just help, have people who are supportive around you i hope this video has been informative um, and you are now aware of a few things that you probably weren't aware of um, on what to expect after you have your c-section the journey is long to recovery but you will get there because every day is a new day and every day your body is recovering so just take your time listen to your body love your body love your baby um, spend as much time with your baby as you can um, yeah and then just enjoy the journey I mean we are super humans for bringing another human into this world um, and everybody's blessed to have a baby if you can because not everybody can so just um, go through those emotions go through all of that and appreciate every moment that you have i hope you guys found this video very informative um, if you have any more questions do let me know in the comment section down below uh, like comment subscribe and turn on that notification bell for my next video um, so yeah thank you for joining me guys i'll see you later bye